Okay, let's continue on with module nine, test hypothesis tests on means and proportions. And we're still looking at tests on a mean, but now we're going to take up the sigma unknown case. If sigma is unknown, as you already know, we are going to use S, our sample standard deviation. That is, it's going to be the same way that we did with confidence intervals back in an earlier module. Whenever the population standard deviation sigma is unknown, we have to use S our sample standard deviation. However, that changes our test statistic. This ratio is no longer a Z statistic, it becomes a T statistic. X bar minus mu zero over S over the square root of N is a T statistic with N minus one degrees of freedom. So it's kind of important now on these kinds of problems that you note carefully, do you know the population standard deviation, sigma, or do you only know the sample standard deviation, S? When you're using S, you have to use the T distribution. If you're using the critical value approach for your decision rule, this means that you'll find your critical values using the T distribution and the T table rather than the standard normal table. If you're using the P, the P value approach, there's a slight problem in using the T table. Because remember, the t-tables only give you a few select t-values for each degree of freedom. You don't have the entire distribution. And therefore, when you're trying to find a p-value, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to get the exact value out of a table. You can either come as close as possible, if there's a t-value that's very close to the one you want, or you can give a range for the p-value. And we'll show an example soon. If you're doing this on a calculator, one of the advantages of calculators is that they can calculate the exact p-value for you. So let's do a problem. According to reports, the population mean family expenditure on prescription medicines was $800 a year in 2015. Due to pressure on drug companies to keep prices down, it's argued that the mean expenditure on drugs has fallen since then. A random sample of 49 families in 2016 finds a sample mean expenditure on drugs of 780 with a sample standard deviation of $70. Use a 1% level of significance test to determine whether the mean family expenditure has fallen. Okay, first of course, we wanna find our hypotheses in this problem. Notice they tell you the mean family expenditure had been $800 in 2015, and you're interested in whether it has fallen since then, which would mean that the mean is less than 800 since then, and right there you have your two hypotheses. Let mu be the mean family expenditure on medicines. Is the mean still 800 the way it was in the past, or has it fallen below 800? So that gives us our null and alternative hypothesis. Notice we have a one-tailed left-sided test. The other thing you have to notice, let's go back to the problem for a moment, Nowhere in the problem do they give you the population standard deviation. You only have the sample standard deviation. And that's what tells you that you're going to have to use the t-distribution. So if you look through everything in the problem, you have a sample size of 49, n is 49. You have a sample mean x bar of 780, and a sample standard deviation of 70, and a 1% alpha level. Going back to our steps in the problem, we have our hypotheses, we have our alpha level. Calculate the t-statistic. Take x bar minus mu, 780 minus 800, over s of 70 over the square root of 49, and you'll get negative 2. By the way, let me point out something. Make sure when you're calculating these ratios, notice that it's x bar minus mu, not the other way around. It's important to get this straight so that you get the sign correct. 780 minus 800 is what gives you the negative sign here. And don't forget that negative sign, otherwise you'll be on the wrong side of the distribution. Let's start again with the critical value approach. We're going to reject the null in the left end of the T distribution uh, with 48 degrees of freedom and minus 1. We'll show you in a minute where this T value came from, if you're not sure. So reject the null if, the t, if we get a t value less than negative 2.407. Our calculated t was negative 2, and that's not less than negative 2.407. So we're unable to reject the null hypothesis in this problem. 
Therefore, at a 1% level of significance, we're unable to state that the mean family cost of medicines has fallen. Again, let's look at this graphically. Go to a T distribution with 48 degrees of freedom, N minus 1. With 1% alpha and a left-sided test, you want to find a critical T value, T alpha, that leaves a 1% probability below it. And you should be able to find on your table or using a calculator that that T value is negative 2.407. Our calculated T was negative 2, so we can see that our calculated T is not in the rejection area. Therefore, we are unable to reject the null hypothesis. What if we want to use the p-value approach? Remember, the decision rule under the p-value approach is to reject the null if the p-value is less than alpha. So in this case, that's less than 0.01. Now we have to calculate the p-value, and this is where if you're using the table, the t-table, you may have a slight problem. You'll just have to come as close as you can. Ideally, since this is a left-sided test, we would want to find the probability that the t-value is less than negative 2. With 48 degrees of freedom, the two closest t-values to negative 2 in the table are negative 1.67. 1.677 rather, which leaves a probability of 0.05 below it, and negative 2.011, which leaves 0.025 below it. So the closest we can say using the table is that the p-value is somewhere between 0.025 and 0.05. On a calculator, the actual value is 0.0255, so we'll use that value for the rest of the problem. State our decision, since 0255, 0.0255 is not less than 0.01, it's greater than 0.01, we are unable to reject the null. Again, we're going to get the same decision and conclusion that we had before, just using a different decision rule. So again, at a 1% level of significance, we're unable to state that the mean family cost of medicines has fallen. Looking at it graphically, we go to our t-distribution with 48 degrees of freedom. Again, remember the p-value approach now wants to compare two probabilities. One of them is alpha, right here. The probability below negative 2.407 is 0.01. And then we take our calculated t of negative 2, find the area below it, which using a calculator is 0.0255. Since the p-value was bigger than alpha, we cannot reject the null hypothesis in this case. If you want to do this on your TI-83 or 84 calculator, press your stat button, scroll over to the right to tests, and the second one down more than likely is called t-test. Hit enter. Choose stats because the mean and other statistical information was given to you in the problem. That is, you didn't have to just enter the raw data in a list. The calculator will ask you for the hypothesized mean, in this case 800. It'll ask you for the sample mean of 780. It'll ask you for S of 70 and N of 49 and then choose the left-tailed option, mu less than mu zero. And then hit the Calculate button. Now the calculator, again, doesn't give you everything. It's going to give you the p-value, and it's going to give you the calculated t-value. So it's going to give you the negative 2.0, the calculated t, and it'll give you the p-value of 0 0.0255. The rest of the steps on the problem, remember, you have to remember how to do. The, the calculator won't do everything for you. Okay, so far the problems we've done have been one-tailed tests. It's time to do a two-tailed test. Many times a two-tailed test is called for. Remember, a two-tailed test is also so, com, called non-directional. There's going to be no specific direction to the problem. 
With the two tail test, we're going to have two rejection regions, one in the right tail and one in the left tail. And we will divide our level of significance alpha in half and put half the probability in each end of the distribution. So let's do a problem. And I just noticed a slight mistake here. I'm going to change that from sigma known to sigma unknown because I remember that it is that way on this problem. Okay. A coffee vending machine is supposed to fill cups with an average of 12 ounces of coffee. Overfilling or underfilling indicates a malfunction of the machine. That is, you don't want the coffee cups overflowing and you don't want them having too little coffee in them. A random sample of 64 cups of coffee yielded a sample mean of 12.1 ounces of coffee. The sample standard deviation was found to be 0.3 ounces. At a 5% level of significance, test whether or not the machine is up to its standards. Notice the problem simply says that the average should be 12. If it's too big or too little, there's a problem. That right there tells you that we're going to use a two-sided test, or two-tail test. Also notice in the problem that you only have the sample standard deviation. Therefore, you're going to have to use the t-distribution. So, let's write out our hypotheses. Let mu be the mean ounces of coffee, the population mean. Is it 12, the way it's supposed to be, or is it not 12? We're going to use an alpha of 5% on this problem. Since sigma is unknown, we have to use the t-distribution, so calculate our t-statistic. 12.1 minus 12, or 0.3 over the square root of 64, turns out to equal 2.66. Again, we'll do both the critical value and the p-value approach. State the decision rule using the critical value approach. If you go to the t distribution, you should find that the critical t value, and we'll look at this graphically in a moment, is 1.998 or negative 1.998, because remember you're going to reject in both ends of the distribution. So we will reject the null hypothesis if we get a t value either above 1.998 or below negative 1.998. Our decision, since our calculated t was 2.66, that does lie above 1.998, so we reject the null. By rejecting the null, we're concluding that the machine is not filling cups properly, and it needs to be somehow checked and adjusted. We'll go back for just a moment to the calculation. And let's take a look at this graphically. Remember the sample size was 64, so we're going to look at a t distribution with n minus 1 or 63 degrees of freedom. We wanted, I believe, a 5% level of significance, 0.05. So therefore, we have to find the two t values that leave half that probability, 0.025, in each end of the distribution. You should be able to find that. In the upper end, that's 1.998, and therefore by symmetry in the lower end, it's negative 1.998. So we will reject the null hypothesis out here for a t value above 1.998 or below negative 1.998. And 2.66, our calculated t, does fall into the rejection area. So we reject the null. What if we want to use the p-value approach? Again, first let's restate our decision rule. We will reject the null if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. Remember this is a two-sided test, so you take your calculated t, 2.66. Since it's positive, find the area above that, and you'll have to double it for the other side. It's pretty close in the table to 2 times 0.005 or 0.01. The closest t value is very close in the table, 2.656. So in this case, the table 
happens to come pretty close to the actual value. If you do it on a calculator, you'll get something a little bit smaller than this, 0 0.0097. And I'll use the calculator value then for the rest of the problem. Since 0 0.0097 is less than our alpha level, we reject the null hypothesis. And our conclusion is the same as it was before. The machine is not filling cups properly, and some adjustment needs to be taken. And here's a graph showing us approximately the p-value approach. Our calculated t was 2.66, so we need to find the area above that, which happens to be about 0 0.005, and then we double it for the other side. So the total p-value, as we said, was about 0 0.01 actually a little smaller than that using a calculator. But we can see here that the p-value is smaller than alpha. This distance out here is going to be smaller than the alpha level, so we will reject the null hypothesis. What if we want to do this on our calculator? Again, press the stat button and go over to tests. Choose number two, the t-test, and hit enter. Again, choose stats, not data. Put in the hypothesized mean of 12. Put in the sample standard deviation of 0.3. The sample mean of 12.1. The sample size. Choose the two-sided option or two-tailed option and hit calculate. And the calculator should give you both the p-value and the calculated t-statistic. Remember again that the calculator doesn't tell you how to set up your hypotheses or how to state your decision and conclusion. And that's the end of part three. Next up, we're going to learn how to test hypotheses about proportions.